Yo, 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 what's going on? It's your man King Lockett again back at you with another video. Alright, this one right here, I'm going to touch up on the Dominican women. Approaching the dating world as an alpha in the Dominican Republic. Alright, so I'm definitely not new to the Dominican Republic. But I'm new to YouTube, okay? So, I kind of want to touch bases as far as, as far as you brothers out there, you men out there who's uh, interested in dating a Dominican woman. I kind of want to help you pinpoint and separate the real from the fake, you know? Um, there's a lot of men who's interested in um, actually marrying Dominicans and you know, uh, having them as girlfriends, uh, 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 dating them and end up getting their heart broke, used for their green card, uh, ripped up out their money, scam, uh, my mama's sick, my dog broke their leg, um, I need money, hey poppy, I need money for, for, for my rent, they got pictures of uh, empty refrigerators, poppy, me and my baby need food, poppy, can you help me, you know, you, um, and you end up being, uh, what, what Taylor made say, a Western Union poppy. You turn into one of them guys who just sending money abroad, you know? Well, I'm trying to help you um, differentiate the real from the fake. Let's separate it right quick, like. Now, this is only my experience in the Dominican Republic. This isn't 100% guaranteed to work for anybody else. This works for me, you know? I have, a, I have plenty of friends, female friends. I have plenty of male friends, but, but all of my um, female friends, um, you know, we get along perfectly. I don't send no money. They don't ask for no money. I have a good time. I don't never have to pay for any services or none of that type of trick stuff. It's all love. I mean, it's just an open door. Everything is all good. These are beautiful, drop dead, gorgeous, extremely beautiful Dominican women. And uh, I have a lot of photos and videos to back up what I'm saying. I just recently just came back. I'm going back again next month, hopefully. Uh, either the month after. Um, so again, this video right here isn't for the tricks of those who uh, you know, lead with their money that don't have time to wine and dine and talk and all that good stuff. You know, they go into a certain area, a geographical location, a certain part of the country we're just plentiful like that and that's what's going on um this video isn't for those this video right here is avoiding sasur that's step one step one avoid sasur avoid porta platter although porta platter have i've heard i've haven't been i haven't visited porta platter yet but i've heard that porta platter has another type of variety of you know, another breed. I hear that Sasur is the attraction of Dominican women from all over the country end up migrating to Sasur to make some money. Now, this is true. However, you still have an extremely large population of women in the rest of the country who never leave their city, who's only confined to their cities for whatever reason, maybe poverty or whatever, can't afford to go different places, you know, and also look at Sasur as a, a, a disgrace. You know, so you want to avoid Sasur, you know, um, and that's your first step. If you go to Sasur thinking that you're going to have a girlfriend, you got your mind all twisted. If you go to Sasur thinking that, hey, man, I can trust this woman, you got it all twisted. If you go to Sasur and that whole little area over there thinking that um, it's anything more than just your money, you are confused. You are tripping. You are lost. Get it together, my brother. It's only about that check. Also, number two, what I want you to understand is this here. You have to work on yourself. Get your self-esteem together. Get your confidence together. And if you're an older man in your 60s and 50s and stuff, and you're dating a 20, 19, 18-year-old, 23, 25-year-old, make sure you don't have to have your body all in, you know, cut up and ripped up like mine's, but at least have your win together, you know, your endurance. You know, you can go run a lap a little bit. You know, you can keep up with the younger women. You know, um, because that's a big thing when keeping up with a, a younger Latina, because Latinas are very, they have very, very high sex drive and 
they they're extremely healthy, so they be wanting, they be wanting all the time, they be wanting all the time. So you got to be able to keep up. You can't be tired to my, you know, whatever, whatever. If you're a brother around my age, I'm in my mid thirties, and I'm sorry for not being sorry, but I date. I don't date in America at all. You know, I started right at like 18 on up. You know, and um, and so you have to. You have to be appealing to them. So that's around my age bracket right now, at 30, in my mid-30s, you know. Uh, my range is pretty long. I am not 60, I'm not 50 years old. I'm, 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 I'm really up out of my 20s and uh, mid-30s. All right. So also what you want to do, you want to avoid the woman that's interested in America. What I usually try to do is talk to them if I meet them and feel like they're worthy enough for me to talk to because I am the prize, you know, I am the table, you know, what is she bringing to the table? So when I speak to a, a, a woman, I want to know what it is that interests her about different countries. I may bring up Europe and America and all of that good stuff. If she's interested in America, yes, I want to go to America. I always had dreams of going to America and blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is 50-50 a red flag, you know? This is, it could be a red flag because, I mean, if I was in a third world, I would want to go to, you know, the first world countries as well. So, but I wouldn't say my intentions would be all bad, but this is also something to look, look out for. Like my father always told me, he said, hey, if she choose a, a country and she choose America, then ask her what city she would want to live in. So if you want to, if you, you, if you ever was blessed with the chance to come to America, which city would you want to live in? Whichever city she say, that's the city that you need to watch out for because maybe she has a boyfriend there or whatever, a family member's there, a relative there that she's not mentioning to you, you know? And um, so you just want to keep that in the air. Now, if she say something like, well, um, well, whatever city you think is best for me to grow and help you grow, then that's where I want to be. Okay, now she's getting somewhere. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty good answer. And if you ask her about America, which country she want to live in, and she say things like, I'm not interested in leaving, a, leaving my country. I have a lot of friends who talk like that. I don't want to leave my country. I'm fine in my country. I prefer you to move to my country, you know, and, and, and we just live out here in my country. I mean, it's too much stress in America. It's too much, too many bills, too much going on in America. I'd rather you live here in peace and paradise, and let's do it. Because you want to be the one forcing her to come to the country. You you want to you wanna have to damn near make her, convince her and brainwash her into believing that you're you trying to just really convince her to come to your country. That's the one you really want. That's, those are the, these are the signs to look for. You know, you, 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 you really want to be the one who's really pushing this and it's really a fight to do this, you know. And then, you know, um, you don't want the one who's just ready to just run to the country. You know, it don't work like that, all right? You want to avoid the ones who, who's only interested in money, and, and that's not hard to tell. You know, she's want she want to go on jet skis. She want to when you come into the town and you come into the country, she's asking you, so where are we going to hang out at? You know, um, she's already naming place. I want to go to this restaurant. I want to go to that restaurant. You know, she's taking pictures and stuff, and she's trying to post it on her social media and the gram and Instagram and all that good stuff just to draw in more tricks. You know, so so. You, you know, and, and, and so you got to throw little curveballs out there. You got to say, well, I ain't, I ain't really coming with no money this time. You know, uh, I'm not really spending no money. See if she get upset. Say, well, we ain't going nowhere today. We kind of going to sit in and take some walks and hold hands and, you know, circle around the block a few times. If she get extremely angry and upset and uncomfortable, like bored and all of that, red flag. You know, because any any time a woman really loves you, she's going to love this is like general all across. This is a very broad statement right here that that applies all over the globe. When a, when a person genuinely cares about another person and, and honestly want to be with them without any alternative motives of hidden agendas or whatever, you're going to want to be around that person, especially a woman, no matter what's being spun or not. You know, so you pay attention to that. That's a red flag. You know, a good woman, a good Dominican woman, a lot of my friends, this is what they do. That's not interested in my money at all. They would simply say, hey, I'll cook. Let's just go get something to eat from the grocery store. 
And she'll go in there. And what I usually do to keep myself from being cheated because I trust these women and I know that I'm, I'm in good hands. I hand them a certain amount of money and they would manage it very well to keep me from getting overpriced or uh, 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 charged too much or whatever because they think I'm foreigner. I keep my mouth closed and let them talk. They get the Dominican prices. They hustle, bustle. They do their thing. They get the money. Uh, they get the best that my, everything that the, as much as my money can buy at the time and they help me save a lot of money. So they'll go in the grocery store and the best grocery store with the reasonable, reasonable prices get the groceries that's needed for the entire week or uh, a few days or whatever. And what they would do, they would go cook. Cook up the food, cook up, you know, do whatever so we don't have to go out as much. We don't have to spend as much money as much. Everything is pretty much on a tight budget, a good budget, you know, and that's impressive to me. So these are the things you want to look at. You want to look at the woman who said, hey, we ain't got to go all these places and stuff to kind of get to know each other. The only thing we got to do is, um, you know, go sit with my family. That's a big key. They take you to the family. If she's saying, hey, come sit with my family, you know, um, I want you to meet my, my dad, my mother, my brother, especially the mother. It seems like in the Dominican culture, the mother really be running things because a lot of times the fathers be in and out. Although the father, usually when they're in the home, they have a lot of say so, but the mothers are the, the bread and butter. So if you're going home to meet the mama and the sisters and, and the aunts and all of them, and they actually bringing everybody over for you for a dinner, that's a big thing right there because once you are accepted and they're very family oriented, once you are accepted in the family, hey, the rest is history. I mean, you could damn near open the door without knocking, come anytime you want, fly into the country anytime you want, don't have to warn them and say, I'm coming. You just pull up, they wait. You know, always an open door. So the ones who are interested in money only, you want to watch out for those. I kind of took notes this time, y'all, to keep me from going all over the place. Again, avoid the sex trade. You know, although the sex trade is all over the country, earlier I said avoid Sassua in that area. The sex trade is all over the country, no matter where you are, south, east, um, southeast, east, west, central, Dominican, Republic, wherever you are, the sex trade is there. But you still can avoid the sex trade. Let's say, for instance, if you're in Santo Domingo, you know, um, that country is the cap. That city is the capital. So they have the areas where the girls are, you know, uh, prostituted, um, or working girls making their money. And even whether there are foreigners there or not, they're working girls, even working for the uh, uh, towards the, the 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 Dominican men as well. You know, but you want to go on the outskirts of our, just skim around those areas because you have so many areas in Santo Domingo to where there's no uh, 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 sex workers or working girls there, you know. Uh, you can go on the outskirts of San Cristobal, Bonnie, you know, all those different little, little towns where the, the, the women don't, the women are still at home with their parents and they're not necessarily out there in the streets. They're going to school and coming out, uh, going to school and going home. You know, they're not out there all in the streets trying to make money and stuff like that. So these are the sisters you want to look for, you know. But that, that's on a exploring type of basis. You have to get out there and explore. You know, each time I travel to the Dominican Republic, I travel by, I travel by myself alone and I explore. I go out there in the, in the hoods, the, the streets, the culture. I avoid all tourist attractions. I, anything that got something to do with the tourists, I'm opposite. A lot of places I find myself at, I am the only tourist there. I am, well, I don't even consider myself a tourist. I consider myself a foreigner. So I'm the only foreigner there at the time, you know. Um, also, you want to you wanna target the women who's fresh out of high school, of age. Although in their country, I don't think it's, it's based on household, um, um, whether or not they, you know, let their daughters, you know, w what the age limit is. But I'm, I'm American, so I like to go off 18 and older. So that's what I stick to. In my country, it's legal at 18, so that's, it, that's what I like to stick to. So high school. 18 and older, a lot of these women are raised to hold down homes and take care of their men and families as early as 11, 12, 13 years old. A lot of the Dominican men go snatch them up real quick, snatch them up real quick. That's why it's very rare you'll find a Dominican 
at least 21, 22, 23 years old and she don't have a kid or already been in a serious relationship, 18, 19, a lot of times it's hard to catch them at that age and they don't already have children and because the men are already coming in and getting them as soon as they, they, they fresh on the market, you know. So you kind of want to go in at the sisters that's like right at 18, 19, fresh out of high school or currently in college going to school who's doing something different than just sitting around looking pretty all day. So these are the women you want to, you want to, you want to, you want to go at these sisters right here. You want, you want to get their attention. You know, you, you want to, you want to see if they choosing you. You want to, you want to see if they shooting and choosing, choosing sisters at you. And if so, then you go holler at them and you go ahead and get them. The Americanized Dominican woman, a lot of them are Americanized. America is, you know, leading and influence. Um, world leader and influence, and, and it's our people, the Black Americans, who's who 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 has the style, the taste, and every other race of people want to be like us, you know. So, but I avoid those women who actually want to be like the women in my country because there's a reason why I'm not dating in my country, you know. So if I'm going somewhere else, I kind of want another type of Black woman, you know, a, a, a brown woman, you know. Um, I kind of want another taste, another vibe, another culture, another tradition. So anytime I see uh, any Dominican woman twerking and stuff, when I know it's the bachata, you twerking and you trying to twerk and all that good stuff, then nah, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I, I kind of keep pushing. You see what I'm saying? So you kind of want to stay away from the ones who's Americanized and all that good stuff right there because if that's the case, you might as well stay in the matrix and keep that matrix mindset and you deal with the matrix women. You feel what I'm saying? So the ones who are baby mamas and single mothers, first of all, if I want a baby mama and a single mother, I got plenty of sisters around me who are baby mamas and single mothers, you know? So uh, if that's the case, I just pick from there. I don't want, you don't want to necessarily um, uh, uh, go for the baby mama, single mother, although it's okay, it's nothing against being with a baby mama, single mother, whether in your country or overseas. But overseas, you have to understand, it's, jobs are very hard to come by. There are no jobs in the Dominican Republic. They have to create jobs. Yeah. They even pay guys to pump gas in your car. Like you pull up at a gas pump at a lot of places, there are men who stand standing there taking money. They get paid to pump gas. This is just another way to create another job for somebody to do because you can pump your own gas, really, you know. But somebody need to do it so they can get some money. And they get paid pretty good, I heard. Um, so if you're dealing with a woman with children or a child, now you got more of a risk on your hand. You know, you got more of a, a, a responsibility because you have to now provide for her and this child. And also, you have to deal with whatever father and their tradition and culture there that's going on as far as how baby daddies are. You know, and he could be laying in the cut. Who knows what type of game being played. But... At the same time, you don't want to have to deal with a situation to where you, you, um, 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 she, she definitely have to go out there some type of way and get this money. So she don't have a job. So how is she provide food for her, her child? You know, uh, and 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 now this is another thing you want to pay attention to. You know, I try to avoid the women who, who um, has an apartment in the Dominican Republic and has uh, furniture so many different outfits, so many different nice pair of clothes, and, you know, um, uh, they're wearing the Gucci and the Louis Vuitton and all these little bags and stuff. I avoid those women. Why? Because they are Americanized. It's okay to be independent and have your own apartment, but how are you supporting yourself in this third world country that's not paying you enough money to do all of these things? And also, how are you a single woman, whether she have kids or not, and you have to pay attention to how she living. You know, she has an apartment and she's holding it down, but she don't have a job. But she's making excuses like, oh, I had a job, I got laid off, and, and blah, 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 they still paying me, that's a lie. Oh, I had a job, or blah, 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 blah. Oh, um, in between, that's a lie. You see what I'm saying? Something is going on to how she's, get, how she's getting this money to pay this rent every month, light bill every month, her phone bill every month, internet every month, Nails every month, long ass weave, and I have probably every month, or you know. Um, so you want to kind of avoid that right there, you know. Um, and, and and I prefer to I prefer to pick my woman 
in the midst of her family. I prefer to get her from a family. I got her from a mother and father. They got control over their governor. They watching her. You see what I'm saying? They want the best for her. And I'm not talking about those families who actually pimping their daughters. That's it, it, See, you see a lot of that in the tourist attraction area where the families move into the tourist attraction area because they want to hustle their daughter. You know, you might have a family that was from Samana, they, uh, a Samana, but they want to move to uh, P uh, Punta Cana in the tourist attraction and then send their daughter out there to get the check for them. You know, you kind of want to avoid all those like situations right there, brother. You feel what I'm saying? And, 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 and kind of keep your eyes open and be mindful of what could be going on and, and all that good stuff. Because I prefer personally, I, my advice is you shoot for the ones who are still at home with their families. That's a good situation. Tattoos and long, extremely long nails and tattoos, you know. Mm. Matter of fact, that's a little Patron in that cup right there. I got some lemon juice squeezed in it. Some pineapple juice. And a little tap of ginger ale. Mm. And a little tap of ginger ale. That thing that delicious. All right. Tattoos are extremely disgraceful to that country. In that country, most people with tattoos do not get a job at all. I mean, it's a disgrace. I mean, I've had so many Dominicans come up to me like, yo, man, what are you thinking, man, with the tattoos and stuff? Well, I'm American. So, you know, a lot of Dominicans who you see with the tattoos and stuff, especially on their leg, their foot, their forearm, you'll see them in certain places. If you see the women with that, I say don't date them. You know, don't look at them and take them seriously. I'm not saying that um, a hoe can't turn herself into a housewife. A hoe can change her ways and turn herself into a housewife. But you can't never turn a hoe into a housewife. I mean, it's pimping one-on-one -on -one right there. You know what I mean? So, um, and, and ain't no tricking in pimping. Remember that. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to deal with hoes and turning them back in the house. I don't even want to deal with all that. So I try to move a certain way. And you shouldn't want to deal with it either, especially you trying to go a certain route with a Dominican woman. Now, um, the tattoo thing, nine times out of ten, she's a working girl, was a working girl, becoming a working girl, or whatever. And um, you got to keep your eyes open for that situation. So, hey, long, extremely long nails. I don't even see in America, it's so common, and you just, I always, it, but in the Dominican Republic, the woman with the extremely long nails are the women who's not doing anything at home. They're not cooking, they're not cleaning, they're not doing anything like that. And the Dominican woman is traditional for them to grow up and learn these things as a child. So I shoot for the ones who's already looking like she's ready to work at home and do some things and maybe be a nurse and you know, anything with her hands that's good with her hands, you know, because that's what make a woman virtuous, the hands. How well she know how to work, you know, so these are the things you look for. Again, you heard me mention the long weeds, you know. I prefer all natural Dominican women. I prefer, if I want weave and all the makeup and all that crazy lashes, all that crazy stuff, I got this in my country. I am from Atlanta, Georgia, raised Atlanta, Georgia, my hometown, Atlanta, Georgia. I am surrounded by some of the most beautiful women in the world, multiple, uh, multiple different cultures and traditions here. I even have Dominican women here, all type of Latinas here. But if I want that, I would wait here and get that here. So when I'm overseas in the Dominican Republic or the Republic of Dominicana, I want natural women, natural hair, no lashes, no makeup. Even if she do want to throw on a little makeup, it's okay. She might want to throw a lash on too, it's okay. But mainly, 90% of the time, she's pure plain Jane. Those are the ones I prefer because it's less of a chance that she's out here trying to impress the American man, you know. Um, and also, another reason to avoid the Sassua and Puerto Plata area because that's where the bulk of Atlanta, the bulk of New York, Boston, the bulk of the American man they're up there in that area, so you already know the mindset of the women there. The mindset of the women there, whatever the mindset those men are instilled in them. And I also hear a lot of, I talk to a lot of women from the Dominican Republic who say, 
Well, this is why we're so cold towards for our men because they come to our country with all these different promises and all that good stuff. And they have families at home, wives at home, kids at home. They bring the money here. They tricking us, lying to us. So now we like, fuck it. We lying and tricking their ass back, dragging their ass back. That's y'all done created this. That's what it is, you know. So there's so many women that was like it's so many hearts broken. So many Dominican women hearts are broken because of how the game is being played, you know, instead of just keeping it straight up G, you know, it's being played with a bunch of finesse, you know, and then, you know, so now it make them want to strike back and they, and they and they ruthless when they do it, you know, heartless when they do it as well. You think they love you, but they don't. They cold. But yeah, I try to avoid all the weaves and all that good stuff right there because if she can afford all the Brazilian weave and all that right there, where's she getting that money from? How's she living? She, I mean, come on, man. You got to use your brain when you're going out here looking at these sisters in a third world country. All right? You know, so another thing, you got to look at cities like San Pedro. When I go to San Pedro, I have a good time. You know, um, I actually have an ex in San Pedro, but we still cool to this very day. Great girl. We just, uh, we didn't see eye to eye on some, some things, you know, but it wasn't nothing scamming. It wasn't nothing Nothing like that. I mean, it was a sweet situation. However, San Pedro, usually when I'm in San Pedro, I, I think that I'm the only foreigner there because it's so Dominican that it's not a tourist attraction. You don't have a beach. You don't have no resorts. You don't have none of that. You're dealing with nothing but Dominican. It's a city. It's a pretty large city within itself. It's a pretty large city. You know, it sits between um, uh, Juan Dolio and, and Punta Cana. You know, so it's a pretty nice large city. Um, and I think if they want to go to the beach, they usually go to Juan Dolio. Um, so it's nothing but Dominicans there. So it's Dominican dating Dominicans there. So, um, and I have a good time. I have a whole lot of female friends there, man. You know, that show me a good time. I have a whole lot of male friends there as well. That show me a good time. And this is how you pick that raw, authentic, cultural, traditional Dominican. You see what I'm saying? Dominicana. That Latina, that Latina. This is how you. This is how you pick. You go sit amongst these areas. You know, um, even La Vega. You know, these are areas where you know you might find a few little tourists there, a, 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 a foreigners there. You know, you want to go in all these Romana. Uh, Romana. Uh, am I saying it right? Uh, the R O M A N A. You know, these are the areas you go into. Juan Dolio. You know, I had a good time in Juan Dolio. I spent a lot of time in Juan Dolio. Shout out to Juan Dolio, San Pedro. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Buca Chica. Buca Chica have a very high concentrated tourist attraction there. But at the same time, this is where I take my women from San Pedro or my friends from Santo Domingo. We might go to Buca Chica and, and kick it a little bit. Or I might just go to Buca Chica by myself and kick it a little bit. But uh, but but Buca Chica pretty much have a certain area where you'll find uh, the women who's working. And, and uh, it's usually uh, a lot of the Haitians and Dominicans together. You have a high... High, uh, Haitian concentrated uh, concentration down here as well. You have a lot of Haitians and Dominicans who's actually together. You know, Haitians and Dominicans mix like biracial, you know, so um, uh, this is a pretty good area. St. Domingo, San Cristobal. San Cristobal is another good place that's, you know, like the opposite of San Pedro. It sits on the other side of uh, St. Domingo. And these sisters out here are the ones that you find uh Oh, by the way, San Pedro, these are the ones you find my color. You know, you find my color, uh, it's a, actually a, a baseball uh, country, a baseball city known for its baseball legends like uh, Sammy Sosa and a lot of um, uh, Lorenzo Barcelo. A lot of uh, great ball players come out of San Pedro, and it's a lot of people our color. My color is like, it sits right there. It's like where the first Negro, it's one of the first Negro cities right there, you know, in the Americas all together. You see what I'm saying? So you got a lot of black women down there, man. You know, African descent down there, man. You know, uh, all throughout that whole area, man. Going all the way to the other side, that whole south coast. You know what I mean? Um, uh, San Cristobal as well. Uh, 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 and between San Cristobal and Bonnie, it started lighting up a little bit. The skin complexion started getting a little more mocha, a little more lighter with the jet long black hair. You know, and, and Bonnie is when it really just turned into the light skin with the long jet black hair, you know, um, and these sisters in San Pedro and, and San Cristobal and, you know, it, it's, the, it's that brown skin, that Pocahontas with the long black hair, curly or long, you know, so these are the, these are the, uh, generic, uh, these are the authentic, um, 
uh, Dominican women, you know, these sisters have style, they have class. They're big on their style, they're big on their class, they're big on being sophisticated, they're big on looking sexy and seductive. They, they, everything about them is pretty clean, you know, and I like that, how they move. Santo Domingo, now you have a multi-populated area right here because this is the capital. They all coming in from all over uh, uh, Dominican Republic for school, uh, you know, the university, uh, factory workers, uh, nurses, uh, bankers, and lawyers, and doctors, and dentists, and these are the ones you shoot at. These are the ones you go at, my brother. You go get your teeth done at the dentist, and you send down talk to the doctor that's doing your teeth. These are the ones you shoot at, my brother. You know, these are the ones you go for. You know, Santiago, Santiago, this is where you get the Carter B looking ones. These are the ones where, you know, it's more of a European mixed in. You know, you see that Spaniard little look going on. And I think this is the area where you get the more racism at as far as when they say they're not black. A lot of time when Dominicans say they're not black, they're not saying that they're not Afro, Afro-Dominican. What they're saying is they're not black. Like how we would look at black in America and white in America. Dominican Republic isn't confined by black and white and over here. They're, they're nationalists. We are Dominicans no matter what color we are. I'm Dominican. That's my race. No, bro, you black. You got black. No, I don't have no black in me. I am Dominican. You know, that's how they feel. And so if you accept their culture, if you embrace their culture, you're not just coming there as a foreigner or a tourist who's trying to date but don't want to embrace the culture. You have to embrace the culture in order to get the woman. You have to, uh, even here in the States, I wear the Dominican flag, you know, um, and, and I embrace the culture as the well as uh, whichever woman I'm dealing with, she has to also embrace my culture. This is what it is, or we ain't going to work. You know, so you have to embrace the culture. You can't be a man coming from New York or Atlanta like I'm not I'm above your culture, I'm beneath your culture, or whatever. I'm not embracing your culture. I'm just gonna have fun with you. I don't care about learning Spanish. I don't care about learning the bachata. I don't care about any of that, your music. I don't care about none of that. How I'm play some young thug, let's play some some um, some Nas and Jay-Z, you know, whatever. You're not gonna make it with the with the nationalist Dominican woman. She would rather have a Dominican man if that's the case, you know, because he's gonna know how to woo her, you know. So uh, in Santiago, you'll have more of a, you'll have a real small tourist attraction there as well. You'll find tours every now and then, but you're basically dealing with all Dominicans. It's a lot of beautiful women there too. So when you're in these little areas where it's just all Dominicans, you want to take advantage of those areas. Meet and greet as you move. Pay attention to, to uh, the, the, the sisters who actually genuinely like you and want to get to know you. You see what I'm saying? And um, not interested in your money because not all Dominicans are interested in your money. Like I say, I have a whole lot of Dominican friends, you know, from each and every last one of these different cities. You know, some, all of them I have met. I have a very few that I haven't met, you know, and and and, and they all the same. Never asked me for a penny, never played sick, never said they needed rent money, never said they needed this. Never, I never sent nothing overseas to nobody. I never did none of that. I never, none of that. I don't see that side where they all see. Why? Because my energy ain't going towards tricking and my en energy ain't going towards the sex trade. My energy ain't going towards the working woman. If I see a woman dressed like a hoe, she dressed short. If she dressed in too much of a short, I know it's the island, so they kind of reveal their skin a lot, but it, some shit is just too far. So if I see a woman going too far, what she got on and all of that right there and how she walking with her butt, she kind of want to, you know how it is when a woman out there peacocking and trying to, you know, get some attention with her body language. Those are the ones you stay away from. You know, those are the ones you stay away from. You feel what I'm saying? So also when you're trying to impress the Dominican woman, you have to know how to speak romance. You have to know how to have your voice set to a certain tone and slow down your speech, you know, kind of you know, woo her with your words because this is what she understands. And this is after you done broke all the little chains of all the possible whole tendencies and money and sex trades. So now you got yourself a good one and she's interested in you. So now you got to know how to woo her in. You got to know how to talk to her, you know, be seductive, slow down your speech, you know, pull your baritone out, you know, keep your masculine frame. You know, because she definitely want a masculine man. This woman wants you to take charge. She wants you to tell her no, yes. You know, although she's a high sprung, high strong um, temperament and feisty and, 
and has that Caribbean Latina, you know, that kitchen knife thing going on. You know what I'm saying? That cut you up type of thing going on. You have to kind of like, she still want that man to know how to be a man. That know how to um, handle her correctly. You know, who's not going to catch a bitch fit or be too emotional when she let off something in Espanol that you ain't quite understand yet. But you know, she kind of snapped. You know, you can hear it in her. If she's speaking English, broken English, she'll say some stuff that may, you know, okay, well, you know, it ain't going to bother you like that. But she, you have to be able to woo her. Woo her, woo her, you know, learn to dance a little bit, learn how to move a little bit, learn how to do the bachata. You know, I'm taking bachata classes. I don't got pretty good at it now, but I'm taking, still taking classes to learn my spins and, you know, my direction because the dance bachata is all about the man leading the woman. It's all about this is what she wants. This is their dance. This is their, see, the black America, we got so many different dances. We don't have a dance we actually grew up with. So this, every other tradition has a traditional dance that they grew up with. So the bachata is one of the dance. There are different ways you can do the bachata. Different, different types of regions in the Dominican Republic that do the bachata differently, but it's all based on the same one, two, three, pop, one, two, three, four with the four to pop. You know, so this dance is all about the the man controlling the woman and the woman following the man lead. This is all the dance is about. So even as a kid when they learn this dance, they learn it to follow the man's lead. You know, the man learning to lead the woman. You know, be graceful with her. Don't hold on to her too tight. Don't squeeze her hands too tight. Turn her when you need to. Boom. Kind of lead her to where she's about to go next and walk her into it. You know, so everything is like a dance. So I knew that if I'm going to impress the Latina, because that's just what I'm interested in, then I knew at some point I had to learn how to dance. Cause I'm the worst dancer in the world. I, I have like five left feet. <laughs> you know, I can't dance over there, but I think I'm doing pretty good right now when it comes to the bachata. You know, and I'm and I'm doing my thing, and I always knew that I wanted to, you know, uh, I, um, uh, uh, be able to keep up when it comes to dancing and moving, and when I'm in certain spots, when I'm when I, you know, when I look at the Rico Suaves, the the the, the, the Dominican, Espanol, the Latinos, when they suave it up and they come in, ah, I say, ah, but I say, ah, 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 uh, let me figure out how to put this move on, you know what I mean? So, yeah, you have to know how to speak romance, get the dancing together. Also learn Spanish. My Spanish isn't great, but I have the basic Spanish down, down pat. I can I can walk up and actually start a conversation and kind of get some direction and kind of move the way I need to move with her. And everything is comfortable, but you kind of want to learn Spanish as well. Um, I'm looking at my list. Now, the Dominican woman is extremely, extremely jealous. Mm. Extremely jealous. So when you in Sassoul and you in Puerto Plata and you experiencing the you experiencing the, the, the working girls, I mean you may not you may not experience the jealousy, you know, because she knows that she getting a check, she gonna bring a friend and y'all can do threesomes or whatever y'all gonna do. But when a Dominican woman is into when a Dominican woman is into you and she wants you, she is extreme so jealous, she looking at your mama sideways, your sister sideways. She like, yo, she's like, what? She's she's she she wanna be on your phone, on your video, all day long. She wanna be here, she wanna be there. You know, a lot of my friends, I got the Straight fight them off my video call half the time. They want to go to sleep looking at me while I'm asleep. I mean, this is facts, man. You know, I have some, I have some of my my American female friend me with me like, yo, hey, hola, late at night, you know, early in the morning, hola again, you know. So they are extremely when I'm when, when you're with them in public, and she's clingy. Also, if you can't deal with an extremely jealous woman and clingy, like I'm talking about. She want to hold your arm in public. You walk and she holding on to you. You know, she holding your hand tight. She want to kiss you all out. Of this is romance. This is the romance language. This is the love language. These are the love people. So, so if you're not, if you're not into, if you're not into all of that, if you're not into a woman being clingy and want to hold on to you and, and, and kind of like um, stick with you and, Get mad at every little thing, like you. She see you glancing at a woman. 
she gonna go off. She wanna know why you looking at her. Do you think she pretty enough? She's she's gonna be coming with so much stuff. That's just what it is, my brother. You gotta that just come with the Latina Dominicana. That just that that's just what it is, man. She, you know, this is when you know you have one. You know. So another one is Facebook. Facebook, all right. When she's really into you, she's gonna express everything on Facebook. If she's not going on Facebook where her family can see, her friends can see, and all of that, she's not, she, you know, that's that's a red flag. You gotta keep your eyes open for that. You know, um, um, um I kinda wanna kinda rush through right quick and rush this video on up. I didn't expect to go to 40 minutes, but I want to make sure you brothers really had an idea on when approaching a woman. And this is part one. I'm going to call this part one because I'm going to come again and keep giving you information. And I'm going to actually come with some live footage and live videos of me actually in person with these type of situations so you can kind of see it for yourself, your own two eyes, so you'll know I'm not just somebody sitting behind the camera and just telling you some, some blah, 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 blah. I'm actually going to walk you through this. I may even let you see hands-on what's going on and, 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 and how they apply it to your own uh, strategies or whatever. Um, so, yeah, uh, but, yeah, she'll definitely try to connect you with Facebook and social media, you know, and all that good stuff. Um, uh, also, pay attention to the brands, the shoes, you know. Um, um, Dominican women have this their own style of sandals, open toe, open foot sandals. I think it's so sexy. You would never see another woman on this planet wearing these shoes, except for them, these sandals. So sexy, man. You know, these are the ones you look for, although they all may wear them, but you don't want the ones with the red bottoms or the fake Gucci's or the Jordans, fake Jordans and all that right there. Because we, if we paying 200 and some dollars for Jordans in our country, where they getting money from to just be paying that type of money in their country, but they live in a certain type of way. They live in arrangements that don't match up with the shoes. It's like having a Porsche parked outside of a, a based on income apartment complex. It don't make no sense, you know. Um, you know, so all the name brand and all that, I covered that. You know, she dressed like a whole um, interested in America, all that good stuff. I covered a lot of that stuff, man. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this video with Keen Lockett, man. I just wanted to show you how to approach the dating world in the Dominican Republic, the alpha way, you know, what to look for and what to separate from, you know, the, the tricking and the holes and all that good stuff that's out there selling themselves. I kind of gave you a pretty quick run through this 40 minutes plus, but I kind of want you to look at this video and understand if you're dating in the Dominican Republic, there is a certain type of woman you got to look for and a certain type of woman you got to stay away from. A certain type of area you got to stay away from if you want the authentic, real experience of the real Dominican woman culture. You know, you have to avoid certain things because I myself experienced the real, authentic Dominican woman. I don't experience the hoes and all that stuff right there. You know, I don't know what they do behind my back. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But I'm talking about what I pay or not pay, which I don't pay, or what I experience and don't experience, which I do experience. You understand what I'm saying? I'm giving you my perspective, my game, what I, what I experience when I experience the Dominican Republic. You know, my hands-on abilities and, and what I do. You know, and it's nothing more than what you can do. I'm no better than what you can do, but I just know what to look for. I had a lot of guys coach me. Uh, shout out to the boy Taylor May. Taylor May coached me. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Bo Rates. I uh, watch a lot of his stuff. Uh, he his videos coached me. Taylor May hands on sent me messages and we talked back and forth before I even made my first trip, my very first trip to Santo Domingo. I, I wasn't afraid to reach out to learn from some of the pioneers at this game. You know, uh, I watch Miko Worldwide. You know, I watch um, Antonio the Cuban cigar smoker. I watch a lot of these guys, man, uh, um, who's actually out there. Uh, the boy Big J, man. I watch these guys who's actually out there doing their thing, man, in the Sasua area, you know. And I also learned a lot from their videos, which led me to move a certain way. So right now I'm dropping my own version of, version of how, to, how to move when you're in the Dominican Republic, or as they say, the Republic of Dominicana. When you're out there, this is how you move when you're trying to uh, uh, successfully date women. See, I, 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 I'm a pickup artist. You know, red pill all day. I'm dating. 
and I'm busting moves and stuff. I'm not paying for anything, you know. Uh, of course, this not this video isn't saying you don't look out for the locals when they need something or when they're trying to offer their help. Yeah, you tip them. You do all the things. Uh, uh, you you tip them. But I'm talking about strictly the women, the mango. You know what I mean? I don't I don't pay the player do none of that. And I kind of want you guys to understand that you don't have to either if you choose not to. But every man ain't like me. I get a thrill out of the woo game. I get a thrill out of putting down my game. I get a thrill out of the chase, man. I get a thrill out of all that good stuff. I get a thrill out of being rejected and still have to bum, 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 come back and pull that rejection on in. Like, yeah, you ain't get too far. And boom, now you're in submission. Hey, I get a thrill out of all that good stuff, man. I get a thrill out of holding on to and having women around holding on to me for their life. You know what I mean? I get a thrill out of all that good stuff, man. Because a lot of my women throughout life, man, we still cool to this day, man. It's been out there since elementary school, man. You know what I'm saying? So I get a thrill out of all that good stuff, man. You see what I'm saying? I get a thrill out of not having to pay, you know, and pretty women just really want me next to them when I go places, you know. I get a thrill out of that. So what I'm saying is, man, you know, some guys don't like that. Some guys just want to pay, get on, and be on. Not me, man. Sometimes I don't even, a lot of times I turn down all, I turn down sets. I turn down all that good stuff. I turn it down like I don't even want it a lot of times. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. I want you to like, share, subscribe, and also hit that notification bell that's down below. Hit it, you know, so you can get more notifications of when I'm dropping some videos. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment column. column. If you want to add on to what I'm saying, you, you feel like uh, what I'm saying is wrong, whatever you want to do, hey, you're entitled to your own opinion, go and leave it in the comment column. I may comment, I may respond, I may not, who knows, but I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm going to read every comment. You know, if you have anything you want to say, feel free, but please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notifi notification bell, man. Y'all take it easy, man. It's your boy King Lockett, man. Checking in again with the Dominican women, part one. How to approach the dating scene as an alpha. Hey, y'all take it easy, man. I love you. Stay strong. God bless you, man. Peace and positive vibes all day, every day. Peace.